Thank you for joining Stretch and Flow with Rashi. We hope you enjoy this class. Don't forget to subscribe. Hi, it's Rashi from the farm. I thought I'd do a flow here today. I've got a beautiful view um, in front of me of the paddock of the farm. And um, I thought I'd film from the farm studio today. So I'm going to do about a 45 minute stretch for um, the lower back and the sciatic nerve. So I've been asked to do this by several of you or asked about stretches for this area. So I thought I'd do a 45 minute flow on it. It can be, anybody can do it. So you don't necessarily have to have lower back problems or um, sciatica. So the stretches I'll do will be for your glutes and for that tiny muscle called the piriformis muscle which can become inflamed and press against the sciatic nerve. So for those of you that don't know, the piriformis muscle is a tiny muscle which has great effects on daily movement. It enables us to move hips, upper legs and our feet. And it also covers the sciatic nerve towards the leg and down towards the leg. It's a nerve that runs from the lower back down towards the leg. And when that sciatic nerve becomes pinched, it can result in painful conditions called sciatica. Um, so sometimes that lower back, that hip, the buttocks and the legs are affected. So today some of those stretches that we do will release any tension around that muscle. And if you do suffer from sciatica, help relieve the pain. So you're in charge of how deep you want the stretches. Especially if you do have lower back issues or are suffering from sciatica, Really treat yourself gently, do the stretch only as far as your body is telling you to do it. So really take responsible for your own body. There's some stretches that can be done on the chair which I can show you as well, especially if you are feeling a little bit tight and tender. So really listen to your body as we work through the poses. We're going to start in child's pose. So feet or toes together, knees mat distance. If that's too intense on your hips, you can bring your knees a little bit closer. And then lower your head down onto the mat. So if the head doesn't reach, make a little fist with your, or make a little pillow with your fists. Or you can use a block or a cushion or a blanket if you need a bit of height. But allow the body or allow the forehead to rest on something so it's not just hanging. Tune into your breath. And as we practice today, as the body's in this grounding pose, let's enter some contemplation. So, curious about your mind when I say the word vulnerable to you, what that means for you. Whether you are a vulnerable or sensitive person, whether you find it easy or hard to show that vulnerability or sensitivity. When I looked at what the root word was of vulnerable, it comes from the word, Latin word vulnus, which means to wound. So the literal meaning of vulnerability is capable of being wounded. So as we move today, let that be reflected in your mind, in your body, in your heart. Let that just simmer in your mind as we move together with breath. Notice the breath in and notice the breath out. Soften through the shoulders, widen through the collarbone. Even softening the facial features, feel the hips pressing down towards the heels. Just let the breath enter and let the breath leave. Sometimes what makes us the most vulnerable also makes us the most beautiful. And sometimes being vulnerable is the only way to allow your heart to feel true pleasure. Soften the body a little bit more into the pose. It's like the body is just getting heavier. Notice any thoughts within the mind. Feel the next breath enter and feel the next breath leave. Soften the back of the neck. 
Let the gaze be down towards the mat. Taking a few more breaths here. Play the next inhale and exhale fully. And then start to bring the hips up as the body rocks forward over to the palms. Let the breath go completely. Let the gaze be down at the mat. On the inhale, the core slightly engaged as you rock the hips down towards your heels. You might feel a little stretch of the arms. And then as you exhale, keeping the core engaged, Moving the body forward, you might feel a little pull in the wrist there. Inhale to come back down, hips to heels. Notice how the body's feeling here. Exhale to come back up. And inhale to rock, hips down to heels. And keep the gaze down at the mat. Come forward again on the exhale. And then hips to heels on the inhale. Perhaps coming down a little bit more. Feeling that little pull in the arms. But keeping the shoulders soft. Come back. Soften the gaze. Bring the knees together so you're on all fours. Make any adjustments that you might need. Neither dig the toes in or keep the feet flat. Whatever feels nourishing for you. Palms are shoulder width distance. The finger pads are pressed into the mat. I'm taking some cat cow curls here. So on the breath in, the waist pushes back as the gaze goes up. And on the breath out, that real rounding, arching of the back. On the inhale, rippling the spine. As the waist goes back and the gaze goes up. And on the exhale, belly button to spine. Just keep going with your own breath. Just moving from one stretch to the next. Noticing the inhale. Noticing the exhale. Noticing the ripple up in the spine as you move from one pose to another. Really listening to your body. Back to the neutral spine. Keep the gaze down low. Perhaps take the rock of the hips. Dig the toes into the mat. Push yourself into downward facing dog. If that's not nourishing for you, just stay on all fours. If you're in downward facing dog, pushing that upper body back towards the thighs. Keep the gaze at the navel or in between the legs. Widen through the collarbone. Soften the back of the neck. Notice how the legs are feeling. Bending the knees as much as you need to so the hips are pointing up towards the ceiling. Get that nice extension of the spine. Notice any mind chatter. Focus on your breath. You might even want to take a rock of the hips from side to side. If you're on all fours, you can take some cat-cow curls. Might want to shape the head, yes and no. Release any tension out of the neck and the shoulder area. The inhale, lift the heels up. Come up onto your tippy toes if you're in downward facing dog. On the exhale, you can either take a little jump up towards your palms or just tippy toe or step up towards your palms. If you're on all fours, you can meet us here in ragdoll. Just letting the upper body hang over the thighs. Bend the knees as much as you need to. You can interlace opposite palms to opposite elbows or just let the arms hang. Spending time in silence, listening to the wisdom of your inner truth. When you're feeling fragile and vulnerable, sometimes you're spending time by yourself in silence. You can bring a little bit more clarity. Take a gentle rock from side to side. Really soften the back of the neck. The crown of the head is towards the mat. Bend the knees as much as you need to, to take any pressure off the lower back, especially if there's tenderness there. 
bend the knees a little bit more. And then release the palms down onto the mat and the inhale, come into a halfway lift, a nice flat back. On the exhale, a forward fold as you empty the breath. On the inhale, strong arms come all the way up to standing. And on the exhale, hands to your heart space as you empty the breath completely. Inhale, the arms shoot up. You can take a gentle back bend here if you like. And on the exhale, swan dive to your mat. Again, if the lower back is tender, bend the knees a lot. Inhale, a halfway lift. And as you exhale, taking that forward fold. Strong arms as you come up again. On the inhale, feet firmly onto the mat. And on the exhale, bring the hands to your heart space. Inhale, perhaps you'll deepen the back bend by reaching the palms a little bit further back. And on the exhale, your palms greet the earth as you come down. Inhale, a halfway lift. Exhale to fold forward and empty the breath completely. Bringing the arms up again on the breath in. Palms to your heart space on the breath out. Take a pause here. Your breath in and your breath out. Perhaps setting an intention for your practice. Quality of mind. Repeat it to yourself three to four times as you take your next few breaths. Keep the feet firmly pressed into the mat. Notice your heart, notice any sensitivities, notice any vulnerabilities. Know that everything is just as it should be, whatever you're feeling. One more breath here. Soften through the jaw. Lift up through the crown of the head. And let the shoulders rest lightly on the top of the back as you take your next inhale and your next exhale. Inhale, reach the arms up. As you exhale, making a pistol grip with the palms and lean over to one side, it doesn't matter which. Inhale, coming back up to centre, create length. As you exhale, over to the other side. Breathing in, the arms reach up. Breathing out, let's take the stretch to the side again. Feel it in the opposite side waist. Inhale to come up, last one. Exhale, taking the stretch, feet firmly planted on the ground. Bring the arms up again. And as you exhale, to your heart space. Is your gaze on one spot so we've got a few options here if you're wanting more of a balance we're placing the hands down by our side we're lifting the right knee up and placing the right ankle over the left knee so if you're wanting a balance the hands can either stay by your side. If you need a bit of support, hold on to a wall as I'm showing you now with one hand. You'll still get the stretch. And make sure you're pushing out through the sole of that right foot so the toes are curling back towards you. You may want to lean forward to really get into the hips there, releasing that piriformis muscle. Or you may want to stay a little bit more upright and if you're in a balance you might want to keep your hands at your heart space as you start to sink down. You can do this on a chair so if that muscle is particularly tight sit on a chair place the right ankle over the left knee making sure you're pushing out through the sole of that right foot again. You can either remain upright so this might be enough for you you'll feel a stretch you can push down on that right thigh or knee if you want to take it further, start to lean and fold forward and as you do so, you'll feel the stretch just increase a little. So as I said before, you're in charge of how deep you want the stretch. There's a difference between a good stretch and a short sharp pain. So any short sharp pain needs to back off. If it feels like a good stretch, 
then stay with the stretch. And if you're in a standing posture, you can either hold on with one hand and lean forward, or you can start to fold the body over. Keep pushing the right knee out to the right, pushing out through the right sole of the foot. And if you want to take it further, the arms can reach the mat. Or you can place them on a block if they don't quite reach. And you really feel that pull and that hip flexor. You feel a release in the muscle. Use your breath to help you. Know that being vulnerable is simply an authentic state. Don't be afraid to show your vulnerability. On your next breath, start to bring the body up, whichever pose you've taken, lengthen through the leg, release the right knee up, and place the foot next to the left foot. Inhale, the arms reach up, take a big breath in. As you breathe out, let the left fingertips hold on to the right wrist and then take a stretch over to the left. Inhale, the arm reaches up, take a big breath in. As you exhale, same side, pulling over to the left. Inhale, to come up. One more, exhale. Right arm comes over to the left. Inhale, the arm reaches up. As you exhale, bring the arms in front of you and come into seated chair. Palms facing up, squeezing the knees together. Drop the tailbone down towards the mat. Inhale, push yourself up. Take a big breath in. Take it on the other side. So this time the right fingertips hold the left wrist. Take a breath in to lengthen. As you breathe out, you're going over to the right. Inhale, you're reaching up again. Exhale, taking the stretch to the side, over to the right. Inhale, to come up. Exhale, to take the stretch. Inhale, the arms reach up, take a big breath in, split the palms. As you exhale, down into seated chair, perhaps a little bit lower, palms facing up. The shoulders are soft, they've lengthened the spine, but you're dropping the tailbone down. One more breath. Inhale, coming up nice and slowly with control, take a big breath in. As you breathe out, hands to your heart space, empty the breath. Let's take the stretch on the other side. So this time the left knee comes up, left ankle over right knee, pushing up through the sole of the left foot this time. Remember you can stay in your balance if you like. Hold on to a wall if that's more nourishing for you or come and sit on a chair and do that same posture. You can either remain here or start to sink down into the hip. Hold on to a wall if you need to, if you feel like it's going to give you a deeper stretch. And then for some of you, you might want to take that fold forward and reach down with the arm. If you're taking the seated posture, you sit yourself down, you place the left ankle over the right knee, making sure you're pushing out through the right sole of the foot. You can apply pressure on that left thigh as much as you want. And then if you want to go a little bit deeper and it feels good for your body, you can start to lean the body forward. And you feel that stretch, just deepen a little bit more. Most important thing is your breath. Most important thing is your quality of mind. Don't mask or deny your vulnerability. It's one of your greatest assets. Perhaps even think of it as your superpower. Often it's framed as being negative, too sensitive, too vulnerable. Don't push that sensitivity or vulnerability away. It's a beautiful thing. And sometimes it takes great courage to show that sensitivity and that vulnerability. The two go hand in hand. We can't have courage without having walked through vulnerability. 
whichever posture you've taken, if your hands are on the ground, start to bring the body up, lengthening through the spine, releasing the left knee, and then dropping the foot down. Draw the feet roughly hip width distance. Arms come down by your side, soften through the shoulders. On the breath in, reach the arms up, take a big breath in. On the breath out, softening the knees and pushing the palms away from you, palms facing outward. On the inhale, hinge from the hips. Like you're gathering, your eye gaze can follow your palms as it reaches all the way up above the crown of the head. And as you exhale, flipping the palms, using your own body resistance as the arms come back down by your side. Feet firmly placed on the ground, strong arms. Inhale, you reach up. As you exhale, bending the elbows and pushing away. Inhale, hinging from the hips, reaching forward with the arms, gathering all the way up. And as you exhale, flipping the palms, pushing all the way down by your side. Inhale to reach up. Exhale to push away, perhaps coming down a little bit lower. Inhale, gathering as you reach forward, lifting the arms all the way up above the crown of the head. And as you exhale, flipping the palms, and bringing the hands all the way down by your side. On the breath in, the arms reach up, make a prayer at your heart space. On the breath out, hands to your heart center. Inhale, reaching up, perhaps a deeper back bend again. And as you exhale, a swan dive to your mat as you empty your breath. Inhale, a halfway lift, a nice flat back. As you exhale, place the hands on the ground, step the left foot back, bring the right foot to meet it. Drop the knees down, flatten off the feet. Take a breath in to prepare, using your core, you're not jumping into your back. And as you exhale, elbows tucked in as you come all the way down. Inhale, push yourself up, use your core, not your back. And on the exhale, coming back down again, lowering yourself down. So we've got a few options here. We're coming into Sphinx Pose. So keeping the forearms on the ground, like I'm showing you here and lifting up the upper body. So really not dumping into the back. So if the back it feels like it's dumping, really round through the shoulders and push up through your core. Soften the back of the neck. Keep the gaze down. Some of you might want to use a bolster as a support. So I'll show you the bolster option where you're using that up against your body and placing your forearms on top of that just to give you a bit more support if you need it. So whichever pose you're taking, whether it's over a bolster or with the forearms on the ground, really keep that core engagement. Try not to let the shoulders tense up. Don't jump into that lower back, but engage your core muscles and push yourself up. Then soften the facial features and just let the breath enter and let the breath leave. You're inhaling and you're exhaling, holding it for a few breaths. Know that we cultivate love when we allow our most powerful and vulnerable selves to be deeply seen and known. Vulnerability attracts honesty and honesty attracts those soul to soul connections. Taking a few more breaths here, making sure you're not jumping into that lower back. Use the supports if you need to. Soften through the jawline. Use that vulnerability as strength. Notice how the quality of your breath is. One more breath, then gently pushing yourself back onto your palm. 
bring the knees wide, the two big toes together. Let's counteract that back bend and come into child's mm -hmm. pose, letting the head drop down. Again, if you need to make a little pillow with your fist, take a pillow with your fist or using your block to rest your head on. Making sure that head is resting on something, that it's not hanging and there's tension in the neck and the shoulders. So we come into child's pose, regulate the breath if you need to. The mind's busy, just come back to your breath. Soften the back of the neck. And gently lifting hips up. Coming back onto all four. Take a gentle rock from side to side, a lean of the hips, noticing how the body's feeling. Keeping the gaze down low at the mat. And bringing the rocks to a stillness. In one cat cow ho cow here, breath in as the waist goes back and the gaze goes up. And as you breathe out, that rounding and arching. Let's do another one. Inhaling in and exhaling out, belly button to spine, back to neutral spine. Let's swing the ankles out to the side, coming down onto your sit bones. Bringing the feet in front, the knees are bent. This can be done on a chair as well, like we did um, in the standing posture. Some of you may have taken that on the chair. You can do the same posture on the chair. So we're sitting up nice and straight, and we're placing the right ankle over the left knee pushing out through the sole of that right foot. You might want to rotate that right ankle one way and then the other way. Try not to lean back. So try and keep an upright posture. Notice that little pull in the hip. And if you feel like you're getting kicked out of the posture leaning back, you can place a bolster behind your back just to give you a little bit of extra support. Give your shoulders plenty of room, so the hand span might be a little bit wider. You can just stay here and take a back bend here, just pushing the right knee out to the right, pushing out through the right sole of the foot. If you want to take it a little bit deeper, press into the palms, lift the hips up, rock them forward. Gaze can be neutral, so you can tuck chin into the chest and look forward, or if you want an extra neck stretch and the no sensitivities, drop the head back, holding it for three, two, one. Gently lowering the hips down if you've taken the elevated option. Extending the left leg down, crossing the right foot over. The right hand comes behind to support you. The left arm reaches up, take a big breath in. As you breathe out, you're scooping the right knee towards you and gazing over that right shoulder. With each inhale, you're lengthening. And with each exhale, twisting a little bit more, pulling that knee towards you, softening the jaw. One more breath. And then bringing the body back to center, uncrossing the legs, bringing the knees together, wrapping your elbows around, dropping the head, a gentle rock from side to side as you just give yourself a big squeeze. Keep that breath flowing. Notice your quality of mind and then spreading the feet to hip width distance again. Knees are pointing up. Time. Again, you can do this sitting on a chair as well. This time we're bringing the left ankle over the right knee. You might want to push the left thigh or knee away, curling the toes of that left foot towards you, pushing out through the sole of the foot. 
bringing the hands behind you, either taking everything seated or pressing into the palms, rocking the hips forward, dropping the head back or keeping the gaze neutral, holding it for three, two, one, dropping the hips down when you're ready. This time we're extending the right leg forward, the left foot crosses over. This time the left hand comes behind to support you. The right arm reaches up, take a big breath in. As you breathe out, you're scooping the left knee towards you, and turning and twisting over that left shoulder. Keep the jaw soft with each inhale, a subtle lengthening. With each exhale, perhaps twisting round a little bit more. Inhaling to lengthen, exhaling to deepen the twist. Everything comes back round to centre, uncrossing the legs and coming down onto your mat when you're ready. Just lowering yourself down, let the spine and the shoulders rest on the mat completely. Bring the knees in for a squeeze. Take any pressure or tension off that lower back. Rocking from side to side, you might even want to make some circles with the knees one way or figures of eight and the other way. Really pressing the spine onto the mat. Know that you don't have to be strong all the time. It's okay to show your vulnerabilities, to show your sensitivities and your fear. Just let the upper body rest on the mat so the shoulders and the spine. Hands are down by your side. We're bringing the right ankle over the left knee. Using your right palm just to push that right thigh away from you, making sure you're curling the toes of the right foot back towards you, so you're pushing out through the sole of that right foot might be enough for you, especially if you have got sensitivities or that muscle's feeling a bit tight. If you want to take it further, lift the left foot up, hug the left thigh or the left shin towards you. Make sure you're pushing out through both soles of the feet though. You're inhaling, you're exhaling, feeling that stretch down that side in the glute. Those of you that want to take it further on the next inhale, keep squeezing the left thigh towards you as you bring the head to meet the knee, holding it for a breath in. Let the breath go. The head gently drops back. The left foot drops down onto the mat. Uncross the legs. Place the hands down by your side. So the fingertips are just skimming the hip, the heels. Take a breath in, let the breath go. On the inhale, press into the feet and the palms, lifting the hips up, engaging the glutes, pushing the hips up a little bit higher. Keep the breath flowing, inhaling and exhaling. Gently with control, start to lower the hips down, coming down vertebra by vertebra. Once the glutes have landed, just relax them, perhaps bringing those knees in for a squeeze again. A gentle rock from side to side, realigning the spine, massaging the lower back, then placing the feet hip width distance again. This time the left ankle comes over the right knee. Use the left palm just to push the left thigh or knee away from you, pushing out through the left sole of the foot this time. Again, this might be enough for you. If you're wanting to take it further, the right foot lifts up. And this time you're hugging the right thigh or the shin towards you. And again, make sure you're pushing out through both soles of the feet. The more you hug that right thigh towards you, the more you'll feel it in the glute. 
you either stay here pushing out through both soles of the feet if you're wanting to take that extra stretch on the inhale lift the head up keep hugging that right thigh towards you a breath in and your breath out and then very gently when you're ready you're dropping the head back down the right foot releases down the left foot comes to meet it the hands are down by your side the feet are firmly planted on the mat take a breath in let the breath go on your next inhale pressing into the feet and the palms as you lift the hips up again for bridge engaging the glutes maybe pushing them up a little bit higher this time one more breath with control starting to lower everything back down onto the mat softening the sit bones relaxing the muscles there again bringing those knees in for another squeeze a gentle rock from side to side and we're bringing the feet up so we're bringing the knees over the hips the feet are roughly hip width distance pointing away from you so they're not too high they're not too low the knees are over the hips and the feet are in line with the knees engage the core and really press the spine down onto the mat the shoulders and the spine should be onto the mat we're going very slowly and very gently so inhaling exhaling tapping the right foot down on its toes inhaling the right foot comes up exhaling the left foot taps down with control inhaling back up to starting position exhaling point the toes the right foot comes down inhale to come back up so keep going like that with alternating feet keeping the toes pointed moving with control and slowly there's no benefit in going fast keeping the shoulders relaxed onto the mat and really engaging the core as well. So just taking alternate tap. Open yourself up. Don't harden yourself to the world. Be bold, be vulnerable, be strong, yet be sensitive. Don't let life experiences make you bitter or hardened. Keep that softness and sensitivity. Doing a couple more on each side. Keeping the breath flowing. And just give the ankles a rotation one way and then the other way. So keeping the feet on the ground. And we're keeping the left leg on the ground we're bringing that right foot back into the position so the knees over the hips as you can see extending the leg up on the inhale pointing the toe and then tapping it down on the exhale to starting position pushing out through the sole of the foot inhale the leg extends up pushing out through the sole of the foot exhale pointing the toe bringing the knee back in line Inhale, pushing out through the sole of the foot, extending the leg, perhaps going a bit deeper. Exhale to point the toe and bring the knee back in line with the other knee. Push out through the sole of the foot and then the foot pushes up. Exhale, point the toe to come down. Everything's done with control. One more, inhaling, the leg pushes up, point the toe. And this time, we're doing one more. Maybe the leg can go a bit straighter. And then dropping the foot down, bringing that right knee in for a squeeze. Perhaps a few circles one way and then the other way. Drop the foot back down. Maybe lift the hips up just to realign. And 
then let's take it on the other side. So this time the right foot stays on the ground. We're flexing the left foot, inhaling the left leg comes up, pointing the toe, exhale, just back to starting position. Inhale, push out through the sole of the foot and then extend it up. Exhale, point the toe and drop the knee down. Keep going with your breath, making sure that the spine is on the mat, the shoulders are on the mat and as you extend the leg we're pushing out through the sole of the foot but as you bring it down you're pointing the toe. Just keep going with your breath, doing a few more. Know that vulnerability is the essence of connection and connection is the essence of existence. the one that you're on and then gently dropping the foot down bringing the left knee in for a squeeze again perhaps making some circles with that knee one way and then the other way and then bringing both feet on the ground coming into a supported rest so bringing the knees together and the feet out to the side the spines on the mat Arms can either be overhead or down by your side. Take a few breaths here. So the knees are together, but the feet are out to the edges of the mat. Try and deepen your breath cycle here. Perhaps just slow it down as we slow the practice down. the facial features, the neck and the shoulders. Just starting to relax the body a little bit more. Noticing your quality of mind here. Then bringing the knees in for a squeeze, bringing the head to meet the knee. Really squeeze those knees into the chest. Then lowering the head down, lowering the feet down. And then grabbing a block, or if you don't have a block, you can use something else. You can use a pillow, a cushion. And we're going to pop the block in between the knees. And as you pop the block in between the knees, really use really use the knees to squeeze the block so keep that engagement the knee the blocks in between the knees and you're pressing the knees against the block the upper body is laying down on the mat the arms can come down by your side so keep squeezing the block with the knees relax the body onto the mat bring the knees into your chest take a big breath in and as you breathe out Float the knees over to the left, keep squeezing the block and turn the gaze to the right extended arm. So we're taking a twist and really slow down your breath cycle here to get the benefit of the twist. Holding it for a few breaths, let the shoulders soften on the mat. ready. Use your core to bring the knees back into your chest. Take a big breath in and this time we're swinging the knees over to the right and looking to the left. Keep squeezing the block with the knees. Make sure the shoulders are on the mat, the palms are facing down as we take a few breaths on this side. Know that you don't have to be strong all the time. At times when you're the most vulnerable, you can also achieve your greatest accomplishments. Being vulnerable doesn't mean being weak. In fact, it often means the opposite. Bring the knees back into your chest, remove the block. Lengthen the legs down onto the mat. Bring the arms overhead. Point the toes away from you as you take a full body stretch, a deep inhale in through the nose 
a big letting go sigh out the mouth, perhaps doing one more and inhale in through the nose, a big letting go sigh out the mouth. Decide if your body needs any other stretches. You might want to finish your practice lying on your mat with a bolster or pillow under your knees. You might want to lie on your side. For now, all you need to do is make yourself comfortable and I'll cue you out when the time is ready if you want to finish your practice or you're welcome to stay where you are even when I cue you to come out. So just for now, get comfortable. Let the breath just enter and let the breath just leave. Staying vulnerable is a risk we have to take if we want to experience connection. Don't know much about history. Don't know much about Don't know much about a science book. But I do know that I love you And I know that if you love me too What a wonderful world this would be Oh yeah Don't know much about geography Don't know much trigonometry Stay where you are. If you're wanting to finish your practice, just notice the breath in, notice the breath out. Come back to the contemplation of vulnerability. Let your ears be open. Know that it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how strong, how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming and vulnerability, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasm, the great devotion, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, showing his sensitivity and vulnerability. Take a deep breath in, let the breath go. If you're wanting to finish your practice here, stay where you are. Otherwise, roll over to one side in a little fetal posture. My invitation to you here as we take a pause is to be vulnerable. Let yourself be deeply seen. Love with your whole heart. Practice gratitude and joy. Be able to say I'm thankful to feel this vulnerable because it means I'm alive and believe I am enough just as I am. You are worthy of love and belonging. If you're wanting to come up into a seated posture, just make your way there now, perhaps placing one hand on your heart, the other on top. Know that vulnerability is not about winning or losing. It's having the courage to show up and be seen when we have no control over the outcome. Vulnerability is not weakness. It's our greatest measure of courage. So don't ever hide it. Don't ever be afraid to show that beautiful, sensitive vulnerability and know that you are enough just as you truly are. The light in me honours the light in each and every one of you. And 
I must stay. Thank you once again for joining us on Stretch and Flow with Rashi. We hope you've enjoyed this wonderful stretch for the lower back and those sciatica nerve. There's plenty more to come, so please comment below, subscribe, invite friends to join this wonderful experience with Stretch and Flow with Rashi. Once again, have a great day and talk to you soon.